All right, guys, in the last video, we went ahead and we fetched all of our employees in the dashboard component from Firestore, and we put them here in the collection. So what we want to do now is work on the view page. If I click on one of these icons, it takes us to the view component. So we want to open up view employee dot view. And what we want to do first is go down to the script here and in the return. So we have our name, then we have our data return. And we basically want to have an object with all the properties. So for instance, employee underscore ID, but we want these set to null at first. Okay, so we're going to say that we're going to say name null uh, department null and position null. Okay, now we want to use a lifecycle method here. So under the data method, we want to have something called before route enter. Okay, so before route enter, and that's exactly when this runs is before we enter the route. So in here, uh, in here is where we want to fetch the individual employee. Okay, we only want one employee. That's the one that matches this right here, this employee ID. So again, we're going to have to bring in our database from our Firebase init. So we're going to go right here and say, uh, not const, we're going to say import db from dot slash Firebase init. And then down here in before route enter, uh, and this actually takes in a few parameters. It takes in to, from, and next. And then we're going to say db dot collection. Of course, we want our employees collection and we want to specify a condition. We want to specify a where. OK, so we're going to say dot where employee underscore ID. And the way that we do this is we don't just say employee ID equals or anything. We need to put a second parameter with the condition. So a comma and then inside whoops, inside of single quotes, the condition which is equals and then a third parameter, which is what we want it to equal, which is the ID in the URL. And we can get that using this two parameter right here. So we can say two dot and then it has an object called params and then that has a value called employee underscore id okay and the reason it has this param is because in the router we defined that as a parameter employee id which is this okay hopefully that makes sense so employee id and then we do our dot get okay and then the dot get returns a promise so we do a dot then Okay, and in the dot then I'm just going to put this on a new line here. So we'll say dot then inside here again, we're going to get a query snapshot and set that to an arrow function and we want to loop through. So query snapshot, we're going to use a for each and inside here we'll get a doc. And then we want to actually call use this next method right here. So we're going to say next. And inside here, we'll have an arrow function. We're going to use VM and set that to an object. And this is where we actually assign all of the uh, fields that we want to put up in the template. So we want to use this VM. So we'll say VM dot employee ID is going to equal and remember we have that doc object which has a data method and then we can get any field we want so let's say employee underscore ID okay um, and then we're going to do VM dot name equals doc dot data dot name <coughs> excuse me I'll just go ahead and copy this down So we want name. We also want department. And we also want position. All 
All right. Now, this is this is basically a, a navigation guard. It's going to run before we the page loads. Now, after the page loads, we want to do the same thing. We want to fetch the data. So we're going to set up a watcher for the route to call a method called fetch data, which will basically do the same thing we did um, in the in the dashboard, except it'll fetch a single employee instead of all of them. So we want to go below, right below the before route enter navigation guard and put a comma. And we're just going to say watch. And in here, we want to say for our route. Now we can access our router with money sign route. And we want to just set this to a method called fetch data. Now this method we have to create. So we want to go right under the watch, put a comma and say methods. OK, so methods and then we can define custom methods here and fetch data will be one of them. So we'll say fetch data. And then this is going to be very similar to what we did in the dashboard, except we're just fetching one employee. So we're going to say DB dot collection employees. And we're going to do a where clause this time. So we want to say where employee underscore ID comma equals now we can't do what we did up here in the navigation guard where we said two dot params because we don't have access to this two object. So we can use the router by saying this dot money sign route dot params and then we can access employee ID. OK, so we're saying where the employee ID equals whatever is in the route, in this case, 003. And then we want to continue on and say dot get, which returns a promise. So then, then we do dot then. I'm going to put dot then down here. And inside this dot then, uh, we want to put a query snapshot. And we're going to use an arrow. And then inside here, again, we're going to just for each through the, the query snapshot, just like we did in the dashboard. OK, and that's going to take in the doc, the result, which is the document snapshot. And then instead of setting like we did in the dashboard, we set uh, a data object. We're going to set the specific properties themselves. So for instance, this dot employee ID is going to be equal to doc dot data dot employee ID. All right, so we're going to do it that way. So this dot name equals that. Dot department. It's killing me not to use semicolons. Uh, position equals doc dot data dot position. <clears throat> All right, so let's save that and make sure we get no errors. And then we should have access to all of these properties up in our template and we can do what we want with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have again a UL with the collection header. So I'm going to get rid of this H3. We'll say UL collection and also the class of with header. And let's do li dot collection header, which will be an H4. And in here, I'm going to put double curly braces and name. We don't need to do employee dot name because it's not an employee object like with the dashboard. It's simply the name property, which we set right here. OK, so let's save that. And we get Sam Smith. If we go back, let's go to John Doe. We get John Doe. So let's go ahead and put some more LIs in here. So we'll say collection dash item. 
and let's do, we'll use Emmet, we'll say times three. And in this one here, I'm gonna put the employee ID, I'm gonna put a label, so employee ID number, and we'll set that to our double curly braces and say employee ID. I have to reload. All right, so this one here will be the department. So just DEPT. This one will be position. Like that. And then below the UL, I want to have a back button or a back router link. So we'll say back. And let's see, it's going to go to. It's just going to go to the home page, so slash. I'm also going to give it a class of BTN and a class of gray. There we go. So I'm also going to put a delete button because we're going to handle that as well in this video. So I'm going to copy this, paste that in, and then this will say delete and uh, let's see, actually, I'm sorry, this should, this should be a button, not a router link. And we're going to give this a class of red. And then the way that we get this to work is we do an at click, which will call an event. And we want to call a function called delete employee. So let's save that. And now we have a delete button. We're going to get an error because there is no delete employee. So let's go create that. So down in our methods, under fetch data, we'll say delete employee. And first of all, we'll do a confirm. Uh, what am I doing? Yeah, we'll say if confirm. Are you sure? Then the way that we do a delete is by saying db dot collection, and we first need to get the one we the the employee we want to delete. So do the same thing we did above. Dot where. Actually, we'll just copy this. Let's just copy this whole thing. All right, so collection employees where employee equals that. And then we're going to do the dot get, the dot then, query snapshot for each. And then instead of assigning all this stuff, we're simply going to say doc dot ref. Okay, we can use this ref object. And then that has a delete method. And then after we delete, we want to redirect. And we can use the router for that. We can say this dot money sign route dot push. And we want to just go to slash. And I used a semicolon here. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm sure I've used them other places as well. But yeah, so that will that should delete it and then it should redirect us. So let's save. All right, so let's see. We can go back. Let's say we want to delete Sam Smith. We'll click delete. Are you sure? OK. And that didn't work. It looks like the router didn't work. Let's see if it actually deleted, which it did. So Sam Smith did get deleted, but something went wrong here. Uh, let's see what went wrong here. I put route. It should actually be router. Route is a is a um, if you want to get the parameters and so on, you can use route. But to actually do a redirect, you want to use router. So I guess we'll go ahead and delete Sarah. And then we get redirected. Good. So we can now 
view all of our employees, the list, we can view individual employees and we can delete them. So in the next video, we're going to work on the new employee page. We'll create our form and we'll be able to add them through the application.